Bronsted and Lowry acids and bases. There's three ways really to um, classify acids and bases. And the second way you're learning is Bronsted and Lowry. Um, if you're going like in order of the chapter in the book, um, the first one that you learn is Arrhenius and the third one is Lewis. So in these notes, we're going to go through Bronston Lowry, um, Lewis, and then at the end, um, you'll see sort of the categories or you'll see how to decipher between all of them. So uh, a Bronston Lowry acid. So again, acids and bases is what we're defining and then how they're defined, I guess, is is what we're is what we're mixing up here. So Bronston and Lowry would define an acid as a molecule that's going to donate an H plus. So that means giving it up. Um, you can see that in this um, example right here. Um, we have the H3PO4 and it gave up the H plus. So the H plus became separate and now we have H2PO4. So here that H3PO4 would be acting as a Bronston-Lowry acid. And then the Bronston-Lowry base is a molecule that accepts the H+. Plus. So here we actually just see an H+, plus, but we know that when we add an H+, plus to solution, that's not actually what's happening. We're doing it in water, which is why the water is here. Sometimes we write it as a reactant and sometimes we write it over the double arrows. If it's written as a reactant, you should be writing H3O+. Plus as your product. Um, if you write it, if you write the H2O over the arrows, then you can write the H plus. Um, but correct is the H3O plus. Um, and that is our hydronium ion, but that's water accepting the hydrogen. Therefore, water is actually acting like a base there. Um, water can act as both. We call that amphoteric. All right. Um, Monoprotic acids means that it can only donate one um, hydrogen. So an example of that would be like hydrochloric acid, HCl. There's only one hydrogen there to be donated. So HCl would be considered a monoprotic Bronston-Lowry acid, whereas polyprotic means that there's more than one to donate. So you can see I put some examples on here, the H3PO4, which is what you see in this picture. You see the H3PO4, it gives up the one hydrogen, becomes H2PO4 with a negative one charge. And then um, that becomes your new reactant. It gives up an additional hydrogen, becomes HPO4 with the negative two charge. And then again, that becomes a reactant and we become the PO4 with the negative three charge. So it has three hydrogens it can give up. So it is polyprotic or because there's three, we could say triprotic. Um, H2SO4 is another one. Basically any acid that can donate more than one hydrogen uh, is called a Bronston-Lowry polyprotic acid. Uh, the um, In this example, we see that uh, let me go back for one second, because actually I think I want to, oopsie, reiterate, not that way, this way. There we go. Okay, so again, here the hydrogen accepted, I mean, the water accepted that hydrogen. So again, this product should be H3O+. Again, if it's accepting an, an H, that means it's a base. Here we see the hydrogen from the water being donated. That's what makes water an acid in this example. And then the ammonia is accepting it, um, becoming the ammonium polyatomic ion. Therefore, um, it's the one that's acting as a base. So that's where I said before that water is amphoteric, meaning that it can act as an acid or a base. Those are each of the examples. So here it can, it's giving away the acid. So again, I mean, it's giving away the H. So again, acting as an acid. Um, in the previous example, it was gaining the H, therefore acting as a base. All right, the third classification is the Lewis acids and bases. Uh, we tend to stick with the Arrhenius and the Bronston Lowry definitions of acids, but these are, this is the last one that you should know. <clears throat> and instead of having to do with um, hydrogens or hydroxides or anything like that, um, this one actually has to do with electrons. So a Lewis acid accepts an electron pair and then a Lewis base donates an electron pair, um, always forming a covalent bond. So here um, in, in this first example with the fluorine and the boron, um, if you, if you didn't know which one was the acid or the base, like it wasn't labeled, I have the boron that has three bonds, no lone pairs. That means it doesn't have an electron pair to donate. 
So that means it can only accept. So if it's going to accept the electron pair, that means it's the acid. Where is it going to accept it from? Really any one of these four lone pairs is what it's going to accept. So it's going to um, make this uh, boron tetrafluoride compound with now with four bonds. So one of those lone pairs became a bond, giving us our product. Um, again, the boron trifluoride over here is acting as an acid because it's accepting that electron pair. So here, here again is another example with my ammonia and my boron trifluoride. Again, the boron does not have any lone pairs to give away. Therefore, it's going to be the one that accepts. And again, accepting a, an, an electron pair means that you're an acid. Here, the nitrogen is giving away the lone pair, so it's acting as the base. The lone pair does have to be present on the central molecule. In this first example, we have lone pairs on all these fluorine, fluorines on the outside, but that doesn't matter. We're making a bond with the central molecule, so that's the one where the lone pair has to exist. So here's sort of a summary. So Arrhenius is the one that, again, came first in your book. It's in your outline. Um, Arrhenius is means that when the molecule dissociates, meaning when it's dissolved in water, it's gonna form an H3O plus in solution. So it's gonna give us that hydrogen ion in solution, the hydronium ion. And then if it's a base, it's gonna dissociate. Again, it's gonna be put in water and form as one of the products, OH minus, so hydroxide, the hydroxide polyatomic ion. So that's Arrhenius and that's the most, um, like that's the typical way that you guys have sort of learned acids and bases previously. You've learned like, oh, if it contains an H, it's an acid. If it contains an OH, it's a base. The reason is, is because it's making those um, as products. It's making the H plus or the H3O plus technically, and then the OH minus as its products. Uh, the Bronston Lowry is only talking about the hydrogen ion. It does not reference OH at all. So for a Bronston Lowry acid, it means donating the proton or donating the H plus. So we tend to call um, a hydrogen ion a proton because hydrogen only has one proton and one electron. So if it has a positive charge, that mean it, it means it lost its electron. So the only thing it has left is the proton. So a lot of times we'll, re we'll refer to H plus as a proton in this unit specifically. So um, Bronston and Lowry, uh, the acid donates the proton, the base accepts the proton, and then the donating and accepts things switches for the electron pair for the Lewis structure. That's why I kind of like to put it in this table as I think it helps you visually see like which is which. So again, a Lewis acid accepts the electron pair again on the central atom, and then the Lewis base donates the electron pair. Again, it's donating from the central atom. Uh, okay, so there's your breakdown of the three types of acids and bases.